All right, welcome to the afternoon session. I'm going to be introducing Dr. Alfred Hero. Uh, Dr. Hero is the John H. Holland Distinguished University Professor of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and the R. Jamison and Betty Williams Professor of Engineering at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. He's also the co-director of the University of Michigan's Institute for Data Science, MIDAS, his primary appointment is in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and he also has appointments by courtesy in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and the Department of Statistics. He received his BS from Boston University and his PhD from Princeton University, both in electrical engineering. He has received numerous awards for his scientific research and service to the profession in to the profession including the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Um, Signal Processing Society Technical Achievement Award in 2013 and 2015 Society Award, which is the highest career award bestowed by the IEE Signal Processing Society. Dr. Hira's recent research interests are in high dimensional spatial spatio-temporal data, multi-model data integration, statistical signal processing, and machine learning. Of particular interest are applications to social networks, network se security, forensics, computer vision, and personalized health. Please welcome Dr. Hero. Uh, the blue screen of death has appeared, and I'm not sure why, uh, but I guess I think we should. Let me see. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Thank you for that uh, very, very kind introduction. I'm really delighted to be here. It's the first time I've been um, in this facility. I've been to University of Wisconsin several times. The first time was in 1989 for my brother's graduation. He graduated in the Department of Chemistry uh, with his bachelor's degree. Um, and I've been here several times since to visit uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, when I um, was contacted to address this group, um, uh, it was um, uh, made clear that uh, what was of interest was a perspective on uh, building community, um, building infrastructure, uh, and an institute uh, to basically uh, promote both education and uh, practice and research uh, and outreach uh, in data science. And so I have put together such a, um, a presentation, but uh, being a technical person, I just could not resist the temptation to put in some technical uh, material. So if you're lucky, I won't go fast enough to, to get to that material, uh, <laughs> but um, I, I do warn you that uh, there, at the end there will be some uh, some technical stuff, which I hope you'll enjoy. All right, so um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to just motivate uh, the um, sort of constructs that we were faced with uh, five years ago when it hit us at Michigan that uh, there really was uh, ample amount of interest and activity to uh, start a uh, at least the, the thought process of putting together a more formal uh, set of, uh, uh, of vehicles at the university to uh, both obtain a better educational result from uh, the point of view of the uh, research groups that were doing research on campus and in need of data science uh, uh, in their graduate students, uh, accommodating the increasing number of uh, industry and uh, a national lab and uh, non-governmental organizations, nonprofits uh, that were uh, uh, increasingly in demanding uh, students with skills that weren't quite engineering, weren't quite statistics, weren't quite CS. They lay, they, they lay somewhere in the middle. Um, and so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to talk about the Michigan Institute for Data Science, which came out of those discussions uh, five, six odd years ago, um, and then delve into data science education, just a very, a very uh, focused perspective. I'm not going to attempt to uh, give an overview of all the educational programs across the country, 
uh, of which there are an increasing number. And I know, in fact, here there's some programs that are, that are uh, ongoing in uh, data science education. Uh, and then uh, that's the, tech, the technical part is uh, dealing with a particular uh, challenge for uh, complex high dimensional data um, uh, analysis and uh, uh, interpretation and then some concluding remarks. So that's the, that's the outline. So, you know, we've seen uh, a lot of, um, in the past few years, a lot of publications uh, talking about the history of data science. I especially like Dave Donahoe's 40-page uh, 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 unpublished uh, paper that appeared uh, uh, actually right at the opening of uh, MIDAS, Michigan Institute of Data Science, and he, I think, saw the uh, announcement of our grand opening, and that inspired him to include uh, two or three pages of this uh, 50 years of data science. He included us uh, in, the, in the beginning few pages of that, uh, of that document. Um, and um, he, uh, he goes into a considerable amount of detail talking about the history, uh, mainly from a statistics point of view, uh, of, of data science, uh, going back to uh, Carl Pearson, or uh, uh, all, you could probably go back to, uh, to, to Walter Galton uh, in 1880s uh, for uh, PCA and, and dimensionality reduction through John Tukey's uh, 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 maxim that exploratory data analysis should be performed uh, in conjunction and, in fact, previous to confirmatory data analysis. Uh, so that's sort of the first uh, instantiation, if you like, of looking at um, uh, data from a st statistics point of view uh, without a model, right? Uh, let the data speak for itself and then apply a model in, as a function of what you see in exploring the data and visualizing the data through his exploratory data analysis book, the classic in 1977, and then uh, uh, in 87, the um, uh, knowledge discovery and databases community established KDD, computer science um, uh, uh, take, if you like, on, on, on uh, data science. And then uh, lots of other things have occurred since then. Um, so it's developed into, from, a, from sort of a statistics uh, and um, computer science uh, field uh, into a, a, a wide, uh, uh, widely embraced multidisciplinary field. And I should mention, of course, that um, you know, it, from the narrow lens of uh, communities that developed sort of algorithms and focused on the fundamentals of dealing with data, uh, computer science and statistics arguably played the principal roles. But there were lots of other fields, right, going back. Uh, more than 50 years, uh, the, the social sciences, for example, that uh, use data, psychology, and, uh, uh, and, and sociology, and so forth. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm including them more in a domain uh, applica applications of data uh, science as opposed to the foundational uh, component. So what is driving the evolution of data science, I think, is principally three things. Uh, the uh, uh, data sets are certainly uh, getting larger and more diverse, more complex structure. Um, their provenance is often uh, uh, not completely known. The metadata may be missing. Uh, there may be noise in the data. There may be other attributes of the data that, we, that uh, uh, aren't uh, uh, annotated. And so you have to somehow infer or account for the possibility that your data might not have the uh, veracity or providence that you, uh, that you expect, well, it's especially when you're trying to combine different data sets collected uh, by different uh, teams at different times with different instruments and so forth. Uh, and then, of course, uh, privacy concerns with anonymization and fair use and, and reuse and so forth. So I'm not going to talk too much about the privacy aspects, uh, but I will talk about the others. So um, at Michigan, what led to this um, uh, this, this sort of uh, cathartic moment where uh, about 10 or 12 of us from the School of Information, Statistics, Computer Science, Electrical Engineering, Physics, uh, Mathematics, uh, School of Public Health, Biostatistics, all got together. Uh, 
was uh, motivated by the, just the tremendous number of activities on campus that were in some uh, uh, form or another uh, using similar tools, unaware of each other uh, uh, largely, um, and um, uh, asking uh, or demanding for uh, attention in terms of, of producing uh, students and uh, uh, recognition at an institutional level uh, uh, that uh, uh, data uh, manipulation, data collection, data analysis was a cross-cutting field. So I'll just give a few examples here. This is an example from uh, uh, published in the conversation about the Flint uh, lead uh, water uh, contamination problem, uh, which uh, uh, a, a team that I'll talk about uh, in, a, in a few minutes, the Michigan Data uh, Science team, a team of undergraduates uh, under the uh, uh, leadership of uh, a couple of professors, uh, Jake Abernethy and Eric Schwartz from CS and the School of Business, respectively marketing, uh, uh, developed uh, uh, a, uh, an app, uh, a, a smartphone app, for the responders in Flint, Michigan to basically record, collect data, uh, and uh, have it analyzed overnight to help the uh, responders figure out based on not just um, uh, uh, water samples uh, or soil samples, but based on a big data of demographic and survey results and even social media, um, uh, a, uh, the next uh, region within the city to, to, to test. So they were able to use uh, data collected uh, in a um, a big data context to uh, guide their uh, predictive uh, a sampling plan. Uh, so another an example is in uh, the area of transportation, where the Mobility Transportation, Transportation uh, Transformation Center at University of Michigan was developing and is still developing automated vehicles, which are connected, which collect a tremendous amount of data, uh, sensing data, and uh, uh, effectively. Uh, uh, are uh, uh, enabling a, a mobility system which can uh, save uh, uh, on uh, delay, travel delay, and, and uh, financial uh, cost, economic burden, uh, of course, deaths, and, and, uh, uh, and help to solve some of the uh, uh, urban blight problems that exist and rural blight problems that exist due to lack of transportation that provide access to jobs, healthcare, and shopping and so forth, but this uh, uh, is an example where the data comes from a combination of sensors, uh, cameras, uh, telematic sensors that measure acceleration and steering wheel movements, uh, but also uh, from, from other sources uh, that uh, may be derived from uh, everything from social media to uh, uh, survey statistics and traffic statistics uh, in an urban environment. Another area that was uh, very active uh, in uh, becoming much more data enriched in terms of education in this case was at our nursing school and our medical school where uh, the um, a training of nurses in this particular case is uh, uh, performed in a very uh, data-driven uh, environment. Simulations and the mannequins that are outfitted with all kinds of sensors and actuators serve as a test bed to train uh, the nurses and actually to evaluate the nurses. Uh, and uh, all this data is collected and is evaluated by the nursing professors uh, in order to uh, uh, evaluate and improve uh, the uh, education and, and, uh, and, and also, of course, to, to grade, to assign grades to the nurses. So um, uh, this kind of data-driven personalized learning uh, is uh, an area which, uh, 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 we have uh, uh, selected, uh, indeed, in, in these initial uh, uh, conversations of these 12 uh, individuals that I was just talking about uh, as one of the, the primary drivers for uh, building an institute a level um, program. And then another uh, example was uh, from uh, the, uh, uh, the algae blooms in Lake Erie, uh, where the problem there is to uh, be able to uh, measure using a combination of satellite remote sensing imagery uh, and local uh, uh, testing of, uh, of water using a, a vertical uh, a sampler 
uh, on, on boats and, and other uh, 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 floating vehicles uh, to be able to, to try and predict where the algae blooms are going to uh, uh, be, be heading and if they are uh, in, perhaps heading towards uh, urban areas uh, affecting uh, uh, potentially hundreds of thousands of people like what occurred uh, in 2014, then perhaps with, there could be measures that could be taken to, uh, uh, to, to avoid um, the, um, the blight that that might cause. So adaptive data collection uh, was another theme that we identified. And then uh, in our me medical school, we have ICU, automated monitoring, where you have uh, uh, lots of cases of um, uh, critical care uh, patients coming in uh, where uh, there are literally uh, uh, you know, dozens of uh, sensing devices, instruments, monitors that uh, in the ICU that uh, currently are not automated. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, one can use uh, potentially uh, uh, methods out of machine learning and uh, quickest detection in order to uh, outfit these ICUs with, uh, with, with a a false alarm control, the monitoring system, so to reduce the burden on the, uh, the health uh, uh, provider uh, staff uh, that has to respond to these uh, you know, dozens of, of signals. Uh, uh, acute respiratory viral infection, this is a project I'm going to talk about very briefly uh, that um, is part of my own research uh, where we have physiological, cognitive, molecular, and, uh, and other types of uh, of, of measurements, um, molecular meaning gen, uh, gene expression uh, and protein expression and, and other types of analytes. Um, and then we use that in order to predict health and disease, that is find a healthy bed, uh, a baseline and predict whether uh, perturbation about that baseline might uh, lead to a uh, severe uh, symptomatic infection uh, after exposure to some pathogen. And so that's a, a problem in, in data fusion, in dealing with very high dimensional data uh, from assays that may have hundreds of thousands of uh, features, uh, uh, genes and proteins and uh, uh, physiological measures, measures like uh, heart rate, heart rate variability and so forth. Uh, going to the uh, level of epidemics, of course, uh, that the CDC uh, records uh, hospital deaths, but one can also use uh, social and news media in order to supplement those reports to have more accurate uh, tracking of potential uh, epidemics or pandemics and avoid uh, uh, things like the uh, pandemic flu in 1918 from uh, catching us on, uh, by surprise. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we were aware of the work of Susan Murphy uh, on ob obesity and smoking cessation, where this is an example of an active learning uh, approach uh, to try and effectively intervene using a mobile uh, smartphone, a health app uh, in uh, uh, giving positive reinforcement of uh, healthy behaviors such as uh, physical movement, exercise, uh, eating habits, and so forth. But uh, active learning, because if you give uh, if you give too many uh, uh, interventions the uh, uh, person is going to switch the phone off. If you don't give enough, you're not going to have a good uh, enough effect. And that's very highly, that, that switch off point between the two is highly personally dependent. So you have to learn that on the fly. Uh, so uh, this just sort of says the same thing for different areas, uh, which uh, uh, in materials genome and biomedicine and cyber physical networks, that uh, activities at the university uh, research level activities, education activities, uh, really were being done in parallel without a whole lot of coordination and without a lot of awareness of the different types of, uh, uh, of common tools uh, and uh, access to data uh, was going on. So uh, uh, the, uh, one, of, one of the primary uh, uh, effects, I think, of a uh, uh, an evolving field is evolving terminology. And then we see that uh, there's quite a bit of uh, new terminology being bandied about that uh, uh, indicates perhaps that, that some cleanup might be, might be necessary in terms of a, 
uh, educational program which links these terms back to the established practices in statistics and computer science and, uh, uh, and, and data uh, processing uh, so that uh, uh, it becomes a, a well-grounded uh, uh, preparation of the data science uh, students to be able to refer to the references that would indicate um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, innovation in um, uh, doing uh, uh, data processing, pre-processing, uh, visualization, analysis, and so forth. So uh, accompanied with all of this, uh, this data that um, is uh, uh, exploding on, on campus uh, was, it was the, the realization that there's a, uh, uh, an explosion of the number of software products. And so if you look at uh, uh, software usage, and this is uh, taken off of uh, uh, Google Trends, uh, the number of Google Scholar hits uh, over uh, a period of 20 years uh, for different types of software pro packages uh, that are uh, popular in uh, uh, statistical data science, you can see that uh, there's been a uh, super linear trend, right? So the increase in the number of software packages uh, is, uh, is, is almost as uh, explosive as the increase in the number of data sets, uh, which I quickly um, showed in, the, in a previous slide. Uh, that's not a good situation, I would argue, that you know, if, if you need a different software package for every data set, or even every 10 data sets, uh, that's not a, a scalability that uh, indicates convergence of a uh, tool set onto reliable and trusted uh, 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 principal uh, uh, tools. So uh, these, uh, this just shows the, the, this, this increase in the number of software packages independently of, uh, uh, well, this is just R packages, I guess, in, off of CRAN. Uh, so this is, instead of Google hits, this is the uh, repository uh, count of R packages, again, increasing at a, a high rate. Uh, and uh, one could ask, uh, do we need to go towards some consensus-based uh, under underwriter laboratory standards, the similar way that you know the uh, when you go in and purchase a light bulb, you have uh, a stamp of approval that the light bulb is uh, is is going to have a lifetime which is in uh, concordance with what what is what is advertised on the box. So um, uh, perhaps uh, we need some standards, and that is a major. Uh, 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 direction that we're uh, pursuing. It's not clear whether the standards are necessary. Um, you know, the, the Wild West ca can, can produce, uh, in many cases, very uh, innovative ideas, and regulation uh, may, not, uh, may not be the best thing. Maybe it's just spreading the word about the good um, and the bad and the ugly. So uh, lots of disciplines are engaging in data science, and this was the other aspect of do we have the capacity on, on campus in order to build a, a program that, uh, uh, that, that combines the types of uh, training of, and, and education of skills that are needed uh, by the, 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 the workforce and by students that will be going to graduate school. Um, and so, uh, uh, what the answer to this uh, that, uh, that we came up with after looking uh, through uh, the various uh, disciplines of these individuals who were at the initial meetings was that uh, there's a number of disciplines that are developing principles that needed to be involved. And so mathematics was clearly uh, as, as a, uh, a discipline that views a data as a function or as a matrix and then tries to look at geometric or topological properties as a very fundamental uh, uh, area that can uh, establish new geometric intuition for uh, uh, data analytics. Uh, computer science, obviously, that's uh, producing software and uh, heuristics uh, and database indexing methods uh, is, is obviously uh, involved in uh, training students with the requisite skills. Uh, for attacking these types of uh, highly uh, 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 difficult problems involving uh, both analysis and uh, uh, software uh, uh, pr production, data collection, um, and uh, uncertainty uh, quantification for uh, sort of statistics being involved in that. 
uh, information science, where the human in the loop, uh, which we've heard some, uh, uh, some, some comments about in earlier talks, uh, is, uh, is another area which uh, is clearly a pillar, or one of the, one of the pillars of, of, uh, of uh, a um, healthy uh, uh, data science program. Uh, that uh, then, of course, engineering, which uh, is, uh, uh, is interested in design of systems that are reliable, that uh, uh, can establish standards of uh, performance, uh, and uh, that incorporate the, the latest in cyber physical systems, uh, real time computing, uh, and sensing and control, signal processing, and so forth, uh, uh, are, are a component of that. And then physics, which uh, uh, has been uh, uh, very active and very, has made many contributions, especially in the network sciences area to data science, uh, uh, also has a, uh, a principal role. So these were the so sort of the six primary areas that uh, were involved in those initial discussions and that led uh, eventually to the, uh, uh, the decision to go, go ahead and ask for a major investment by the university into data science. So uh, this just sort of gives an engineering view uh, which illustrates some of the, um, uh, some of the, the, the important points of, of actually building systems that, can, that are user uh, uh, friendly and that uh, can be uh, applied for collecting data, for managing the data, and then for analyzing the data afterwards. And so if you look at uh, the data to decision pipeline uh, in 1995, uh, this uh, uh, I took out of uh, a paper uh, uh, published in the KVD uh, in 95, this was sort of the state of the art in uh, the pipeline for data analysis. And uh, what uh, is notable here is that uh, we have a single uh, uh, data uh, storage uh, location uh, stored locally. Uh, the uh, data is represented in uh, a simple uh, maybe histogram or list form. So the algorithms uh, that can be applied to that were relatively primitive by today's uh, uh, standards. And then the processing was not uh, necessarily designed for decision making, rather just for sort of exploring and mi data mining and, and looking for, for patterns. And then today we, we have a, uh, a different paradigm where uh, uh, we have many, many different sources of data, too many to store locally. So there's a, a need for, for uh, uh, distributed uh, uh, access to uh, sensing data, which might be data on a, on a, on a satellite uh, or at, uh, on a, a ground sensor, uh, local storage, which might, might be data that, that uh, informs models that you fit uh, to the sensing data, uh, and cloud services for archival uh, 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 data that uh, you might bring in as side information. And then we have to account for the tremendous scale and variety and velocity uh, reliability and relevance of the uh, of the data through the pipeline by uh, developing principled ways of uh, doing data acquisition that is informed by uh, uh, feedback uh, that that tells us uh, perhaps that we need to uh, either field another sensor or maybe that uh, we have to direct the sensor in a different direction if it's uh, uh, been placed in a in a uh, in a field let's say. Uh, and uh, that then involves a control loop, uh, and that the human in the loop, uh, as long as the, the, the rate uh, limited ability of humans to interact with, with machines is taken into account, becomes very important. So that the human can, make, can interpret an image or interpret a graph, and uh, then decide whether uh, the, the error bars of the graph, let's say, are, uh, are sufficiently uh, small so that they don't need to uh, direct the, um, uh, the data collection facilities to uh, collect more data or to change the data uh, uh, sensor uh, itself. Okay, so um, all of this then uh, leads to the Michigan Institute for Data Science, uh, which seeks to build those building blocks uh, in that pipeline uh, and then to apply those uh, building blocks uh, to a particular uh, applications like the, the several ones that I just mentioned. So 
the institute was created. Um, it was created from, um, uh, uh, from basically from scratch. We didn't have any uh, development funds. There was no rich donor who came in. It was a state <laughs> university. Um, and we, we decided that uh, uh, we wanted to make the Big Bang and then uh, donors would, would perhaps come afterwards. Um, and so uh, we had an investment, an initial investment of about $42 million um, into, uh, into the Institute. And I'll tell you where that investment went. Uh, but you can guess from my uh, comments here that uh, you know, education and, and, and research and outreach uh, uh, were principal components of the, uh, of, of the investment strategy. Um, so uh, we're located right on Central Campus in some temporary uh, headquarters. Um, we have direct uh, 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 links to the School of Information, School of Public Health, the Engineering School uh, here, and the Medical School. Uh, and uh, in addition to uh, uh, other initiatives that are connected, I, I, I list one here, Exercise and Sports Science Initiative, where uh, you know our, our uh, uh, sports uh, uh, science initiative. I'm sure there's one here at, at Madison. I can't talk much about uh, that because I think that's ultra secret. Uh, probably more than anything else I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say today. Uh, but uh, uh, to to make a story short, lots of data is coming from our athletic campus, and there's lots of interest in the athletic campus and being able to use that data in order to improve outcomes. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so um, uh, the uh, campus at Michigan is um, like, I guess, the Wisconsin campus in that uh, we, um, uh, we have a central uh, campus, a flagship uh, at, in Ann Arbor. And then there are two others, one in Flint and one in uh, Dearborn. Um, and uh, so we draw our affiliates, all of these faculty, after you know these initial meetings, uh, we um, sent out uh, announcements by broad email. We put up our website. And we uh, basically said, we're open. We're open for uh, applications uh, for uh, affiliation of faculty. And within uh, less than a year, we were up to uh, uh, about 120. We're now at about 202. This is probably uh, larger now, because this is a couple of months old. Um, and they come from primarily from the Ann Arbor campus, but there are others from Dearborn and Flint also. And then um, we have, uh, of course, uh, from a regional point of view, we're one of the founding um, uh, members of the NSF Midwest Big Data Hub, which I'll talk about um, uh, briefly in, in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, that uh, gives us a, um, uh, a regional presence in uh, uh, pursuing the uh, objectives of establishing public-private partnerships across both industry and municipal uh, and state governments um, and, and universities uh, in the uh, in the region, um, and uh, then uh, nationwide we have an external advisory board, which uh, includes uh, uh, several well-known universities. Uh, our focus of of uh, these uh, this. Uh, a consortium of universities on is open data and open science, uh, which is a, um, a very laudable objective. Uh, whether we're going to be able to achieve it, uh, I think depends upon where you define science. Uh, we're dealing with you know lots of uh, regulatory issues, um, so you know HIPAA protected data uh, for for medical or health related um, uh, collections. Uh, FERPA uh, uh, protected data for, for students, and all, all, lots of other uh, regulatory issues. So uh, open science may be restricted to uh, those data sets which don't have uh, a, a traceable connection to, a, um, uh, to, to sensitive private uh, information of a, uh, of a human being. And then we have an a, a international presence uh, where we have several uh, agreements. Uh, these are just a few that are listed here uh, with several universities, both in Europe, in, in Israel, it turns out, and also uh, in um, uh, Asia. So what 
are the components of the data science initiative at Michigan. There are four of them. Midas is the, uh, is the principal component. We're the ones that sort of have the, the well, we have the, certainly the, the biggest investment in dollar amount. And we also represent the academic uh, center of data science. But uh, we also have a computational science uh, uh, initiative or, or institute, if you like. Um, and this, uh, this, this institute of computational science and in, uh, computational discovery and engineering uh, uh, closely allies with data science, the, computu the computational uh, uh, substrate, uh, which extends to our technology services, which is the third component of the uh, data science initiative, uh, uh, basically maps data to uh, distributed storage to protected storage if, you, if privacy is an issue, uh, so HIPAA or FERPA, uh, and then also to software algorithms for uh, computing on, uh, on data uh, in a um, uh, 20,000 plus core uh, environment uh, uh, administered by the um, Advanced Research Computing Technology Services. And then we also have this, this component of consulting services. We, this is very important because uh, uh, data science being in the state it is, uh, there is uh, there are not a lot of reference materials for uh, people. You know your your uh, uh, molecular biologist who's working in his lab and wants to get some expertise on how to analyze their uh, RNA seq data um, for uh, you know diabetes uh, risk factors. Uh, they can. Uh, they can, you know, read up on, on data science. They can take a bunch of courses. They can send some students to courses if they have students in their labs. They can send their postdocs to workshops. To, they can send their postdocs to Coursera. Uh, but that all takes time. So what we have here is a consulting service, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think there's uh, on the order of uh, a dozen, uh, two dozen uh, masters and PhD level uh, full-time employees of this consulting service who are basically crackerjack uh, uh, of all trades in data science. They, uh, uh, they specialize in particular areas. Some might be machine learning specialists. Others might be specialists in uh, distributed implementations on uh, you know, Hadoop-like uh, uh, distributed data, uh, data platforms. But they all have the requisite competencies to go in and spend, you know, maybe a few hours with a postdoc or a student and, and bring them up on the, uh, the tools uh, and maybe even the strategies uh, if they're not, uh, if, if several tools have to be used in conjunction uh, of using those tools to solve uh, specific problems. So um, the uh, initiative then, as I just mentioned, consists of, of, uh, of these four parts. We're consulting, um, uh, I've, I've uh, have, have omitted from this list the Michigan Institute for uh, uh, Computational, uh, uh, Computational Engineering, uh, Discovery, excuse me. Uh, the Michigan Institute for Data Science, we, as I say, we uh, uh, have programs now in uh, education, uh, industry engagement, engagement. There's four uh, challenge thrusts that I'm gonna mention in a minute. We have 30 uh, U of M faculty slots with uh, new uh, core faculty slots that are, uh, have been allocated. So all that's part of the, the initial investment. Uh, and then these, these are uh, just other, um, for the other two components excluding the uh, MICDE. So this just sort of gives the constellation of our activities. Um, and uh, all of these are very active. We have a staff which corresponds to uh, probably about a third of the funds we're, we're, we get from the central uh, administration uh, that uh, cover all of these various uh, areas. Um, and um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of these. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, well, I've already talked about international partnerships a little bit, uh, uh, but uh, faculty development, uh, education, and, um, uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the research programs. So it's just a snapshot of some of the, uh, the, the core faculty members. You can just see that they come from uh, this, these pillar areas uh, of uh, uh, plus domains like nursing and communication studies, 
which is within the um, uh, social science uh, 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 division of our literature, science, and arts college. Uh, there's uh, uh, you can you can cluster people according to their formal uh, uh, affiliations. You could also cluster them according to what they do. It's just as a different clustering. Uh, so people from uh, in machine learning come from everywhere from astronomy to computer science to ECE. Uh, Laura Balzano is actually a former Wisconsin student, uh, who many of you know, a PhD here uh, with uh, Rob Novak and Ben Recht. Um, and uh, so this, this is a, a highly interdisciplinary uh, effort uh, and uh, uh, we have lots of buy-in and lots of interest by our, our faculty. Uh, and I think that uh, one of the most uh, important things to talk about is our research challenge initiatives, because this is, I think, is what has made, it, uh, made us successful, is that we allocated um, a substantial amount of the initial investment to uh, uh, funding internal intramural um, uh, fund, uh, funded uh, uh, research projects. Uh, we fund them on basically four pillars, uh, learning analytics, transportation, social sciences, and health sciences, uh, where we uh, require for the, uh, uh, the, the, the funding proposals, the teams that propose our research, we require that the, at least three colleges be involved in those teams, and we require that these cross cuts be present. So, you know, where perhaps not all of them, so privacy and cybersecurity might not be part of a, uh, a proposal um, on, uh, you know, on high energy physics, but, um, uh, but, but most, of, most of these need to be present uh, so that we can ensure that there's a true uh, collaboration between the tool builders, methodological uh, uh, researchers, and those who are domain scientists, scientists in each one of these areas. These four areas were chosen out of about 20 uh, based on the uh, amount of uh, existing activity that was on campus uh, and the uh, perceived impact that a major investment would have on bringing these areas uh, to a point where uh, an investment, a major investment of a million plus dollars per proposal uh, per team uh, would be uh, would would be a, a game changer. So uh, this is just uh, some of the proposals that we ended up funding. So we funded uh, a, a total of, of nine proposals in learning analytics uh, for uh, funding one, as you can see, uh, over uh, statistics, biostatistics, ECS, School of Information, uh, uh, School of Education, and Physics. Uh, this is basically developing uh, methodologies for personalized learning and personalized education, right? So using a tremendous amount of data ranging from clickstream data in classrooms, uh, you know, inverted classroom uh, types of contexts where the students come in the classroom and, and, and participate in problem solving uh, to uh, demographic data, to their, uh, uh, their transcripts, uh, to any other data that they uh, uh, agree to provide. Uh, transportation is another uh, uh, major uh, component, as I, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, building uh, a, a transportation data ecosystem, uh, reinventing public urban transportation mobility. Uh, health sciences, which is of particular interest probably to this group, uh, we uh, have a focus on uh, precision medicine, uh, for um, uh, single cell genomic data analysis. So extending the uh, existing uh, techniques which deal with uh, uh, populations of cells and extracting RNA uh, from populations of cells to get the, the signal uh, strength sufficiently high so that you can distinguish that signal from the background of, uh, of variation in noise. Uh, going down to the single, single cell where you may have much less signal because you can't take as, as large a uh, volume of, of, of cells uh, from, say, uh, you know, granulocytes or, you know, white blood cell uh, uh, that, uh, that as contrasted 
uh, to leukocytes, right? If you're looking at blood blood cell uh, 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 assays, um, and then some others I won't bother mentioning in uh, uh, prediction. Uh, this is cardiology, uh, and this one is out of out of psychiatry. And then we have a, uh, a couple of social science uh, uh, activities also, which are based on uh, 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 psychology uh, lead at an institute for social research and an economics lead. Uh, who's um, actually this one's kind of interesting uh, uh, because uh, it's uh, related to uh, Becker Wells' talk. Uh, what this project seeks to do is to build a new Google search engine which uh, instead of searching a keyword and then just putting out a list of documents, you, could, you put in a keyword and a request for a graph or a table or a calculation uh, of economic activity, let's say, in a particular sector, like transportation in a particular uh, country or over a particular time span. You see, you put in a formula at the Google level, a Google search level, uh, into the window, and then it goes out, and what it spits back are graphs and tables. So mathematical uh, um, uh, responses to a mathematical query. So this, uh, this just shows the uh, NSF Midwest Big Data Hub uh, uh, that uh, uh, we were part of. Uh, this, uh, the call for this hub uh, went out in uh, early 2015, and there were um, uh, responses from most of the Midwestern universities. For some reason, University of Wisconsin wasn't part of, 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 of that. Um, uh, uh, it ended up uh, the ones that, that were interested in participating uh, were these, uh, these five when everything shook out. Uh, so University of Illinois, Michigan, Iowa State, University of Indiana, and then uh, North Dakota, University of North Dakota. Um, uh, the hub lead is at UIUC. Uh, and the, uh, so if you're, if you're familiar with the uh, data hub, uh, the big data hub concept that NSF threw out, uh, then you'll recognize this kind of, of, of structure. So the, the concept is that the uh, Midwest data hub, like the other three hubs, the, the Northeast, the South, and the West, um, uh, is basically a um, promoter of regional uh, activities and community building uh, within, within their region. So workshops, holding workshops, holding um, short courses, reaching out to industry, reaching out to academic institutions that aren't part of these, uh, these, these five, um, and then uh, forming partnerships that perhaps otherwise would not happen if you didn't have this type of structure. Uh, and then, the, so that's the hub, and then the spokes are aligning the activities of the hub with particular um, areas, uh, thematic areas of, of, uh, uh, of data science. And so um, what we have is, uh, you can see healthcare, water, food, energy, manufacturing, transportation, uh, digital uh, agriculture, uh, network science, and uh, smart cities and business analytics. So out of this, uh, the, the initial grant that we, uh, we, we applied for and, and won, um, uh, we uh, got the hub established. And then there was a second round where there were spokes that were, um, uh, that, that were called for in the solicitation. So the first round uh, produced a number of spokes. Uh, and in fact, uh, University of Wisconsin uh, is part of the integrated material design spoke for the Midwest uh, Big Data Hubs. So you don't actually have to be one of these five to, to participate in, uh, uh, in applying for the funding that NSF basically funnels through the uh, regional hub. Uh, uh, but you can see that there's a, a wide range of, of areas that have been funded now some of them are planning grants, others are collaborative grants, like this one here that the University of Wisconsin is involved in, uh, and others are major grants, uh, uh, such as this digital agriculture grant that North Dakota won, which is almost a million dollars uh, for uh, uh, UAVs, plant science, and education, uh, where they basically collect data and uh, uh, use that as, uh, from, from UAVs and, and other uh, platforms and use that uh, 
uh, for educating students in the agricultural sciences and uh, also for building capacity in uh, their, uh, their databases. So these are not research proposals. That's important to, to, to note here. The spokes or, nor the hubs are not research. Uh, NSF has other vehicles for funding research in agriculture or research in uh, data science. Uh, these are for uh, capacity building. So all, every one of these is for build, uh, goes to building uh, uh, data science uh, uh, or, or data, excuse me, data networks, for example, the computational neuroscience network, where uh, different universities agree on sharing their data, on standardizing the annotation of their data, uh, and, um, uh, and then therefore uh, increasing the, um, uh, the capacity of uh, researchers to, uh, uh, to come up with uh, testable scientific hypotheses on, on an enhanced, uh, larger data set. And then there's, or, as I say, workshops have been organized. Um, all right, so that brings me to uh, the third part of the talk, which is the, okay, great, science, data science education. Um, and so, uh, we, there's uh, lots of, of different uh, uh, initiatives that have popped up across the country, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, but uh, I'll talk about our uh, educational uh, programs. Uh, the undergraduate program, we have a separation of uh, two of data science, uh, bachelors of science and bachelors of arts. One offered through the uh, computer science department, the other one offered through the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, statistics department, uh, which I'll say a little bit about in a, in a minute. Uh, we have two graduate programs. One of them's uh, uh, under construction, the data science master's degree. Uh, and we have a data science certificate program, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we have uh, some postgraduate activities. Uh, so uh, a major activity on producing open courseware uh, on data science uh, 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 and uh, data collection. Uh, data analysis and so forth. Uh, we have our distinguished seminar series funded uh, or supported by Northrop Grumman and uh, workshops uh, in addition to some outreach activities which we firmly believe are going to uh, uh, supplement uh, our uh, pipeline into the undergraduate uh, uh, programs across the country with a big data summer school uh, that is targeting undergraduates uh, the Michigan Data Science team, which I just mentioned, which is, uh, uh, ha is also an undergraduate uh, activity. Uh, and then the Data Science High School Summer Camp, which we are running again this year. So this just goes, uh, so talks a little bit about the undergraduate program. Uh, that's, as I say, it's a, it's a joint program between CS, ECS, and statistics. The emphasis is rigorous foundations uh, and practical use of data science. I'm going to give you a, a, a little more information in the next slide about that program. Uh, and then the certificate program is a nine credit program which has its niche in that um, it, you know, it's, students can, in other programs uh, like biology or medical school or engineering or what have you, can relatively painlessly take uh, three courses plus a hands-on um, uh, internship or a project course, independent study course, uh, in order to get the certificate that then they can uh, advertise to potential employers as being uh, giving them a certified uh, competency in the data sciences, in addition to being uh, molecular biologists or, uh, uh, or clinicians or what have you. Uh, so this just uh, uh, is a, is uh, the program at the undergraduate level. Uh, what I want to emphasize here is that the, uh, this program is, is just for the engineering students, the computer science is part of engineering school at Michigan, uh, that uh, the, uh, it, it basically corresponds to, if you look at the prerequisites of 400 le level courses, a senior course at Michigan, uh, it basically corresponds to uh, almost a dual degree. So these are really only, this is, the program is really designed for the best uh, most motivated students, <laughs> right? So um, that's that's a specific to to Michigan's program. There are other programs that try to uh, develop 
uh, you know, a, a more gentle uh, introduction to, to data science and then follow on with a, with a, a little less uh, uh, technical depth in each one of these areas of stats and, and ECS. Uh, but this is what we do. And then we have advanced technical electives that could be drawn from uh, any technical field, machine learning, data management, uh, and, and then an applications course. Uh, capstone experience is a very important component. And then uh, we, have, we very firmly believe that technical communication is critical for this interdisciplinary area where uh, the data scientist really has to be able to communicate effectively with the domain scientist in order to be able to translate the needs of the domain scientist in analyzing or making sense of their data into algorithms, tools, visualizations, and so forth. Uh, this just shows the uh, Michigan Data Science team, uh, which I described a minute ago, Flint water crisis, uh, drunk driving, forecasting, data-driven marketing. They're working this semester on a public service project in the area of uh, uh, Detroit uh, blight, uh, urban blight, uh, so collecting data on various aspects of, uh, of urban blight. Yeah. So uh, this is just some of the uh, uh, some of some of the uh, uh, advertising that uh, that that MDST does of newsworthy um, events coming out of their uh, out of out of their project. And this is the high school summer camp uh, that uh, that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, this is extremely successful. Um, and it's, uh, it, we have over 95 applications from four different countries to this pro program. So um, we view this as one of the, the, the real success stories. All right, so I think um, I'm going to um, perhaps stop there. Um, and if um, uh, there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. And I've spared you from the technical part. Thank you.